All right, guys, the depiction of nude paintings has always revolutionized the world of art in many ways. A nude painting has been portrayed as a revolution of human history of the images and the paintings and the portraits in human society. Throughout the history of art and the portrayal of nude bodies, being from both male and female genders, has drastically changed the way of tolerance and the ideal body human perception. Many have wonder, wondered if it would be the appropriate fit or look for society if I, or if either would agree or disagree of the idea of dehumanization on the proposal of something different in the idea of showing nudity on the canvas. Over the peak of the century, the 19th century, two paintings have made its lasting impression on the topic of nudity on the canvas. On my left, we have La Grande Odaleski, made in 1814 by John Auguste Dominic Ingres. And on my right, we have Olympia, made in 1863 by Edward Manet. Both of the images portray nude body, uh, nude body, but both um, both images have a different meaning, and but they both revolutionize the, the nudity in art and human depiction. However, both of these images are very similar in both ways. They both show nudity in white females, which are being both both are laying down, and both paintings were made by male artists in the 19th century. At first, we take a glance at the title of the paintings and the names of, the, of, the, of them. The name of the paintings always gives the audience a better understanding of what image of, of what the image is about and gives a bit of a brief background of the painting on the background. Odaleski derives from Turkish descent, the root meaning harem concubine, with other terms meaning women who live with a man but has no part in the household of the man. Therefore, the possible translation of La Grande Odaleski would be the, com the comparison of the Grand Concubine, meaning that translates to realism, realism in images and paintings as, a, as, a, as compared in the world Olympia, which was used in 1880, which was the deeper meaning of the gods. In comparison, the word Olympia in the 1800s means something more mean, demeaning. Olympia is a non-classical goddess or myth or nymph of the of the pages of Ovid. Olympia is a 19th century Parisian prostitute. Within the name of the meaning of both paintings, we see concubine versus prostitute. It is well perceived that the women depicted in the painting of Ingres seems a bit more reserved than the woman portrayed in Manitz. Both paintings resemble bright light, bright light colors, both concubine and and prostitutes with sense of objectification and subordination. However, names are not enough to define meaning and a tone in the paintings. The paintings have exhibited female sexuality. In the English paintings, it shows that the female turned away completely, which hides her from her hides her, her front. In contrast to Manet's painting, the female is on her back, showing her complete front. It seems that Ingrid's paintings, La Grande Odaleski, is a bit more modest of the paintings. If you look, if you look a bit closer, you can see how the artist used in line, how he uses line curve and structure to show the woman in the how she is less empowered. Also, in Ingrid's painting, the female is halfway turned as she were ashamed of being nude or ashamed of posing as a life sex figure. In Manet's painting, Olympia, the female looks very comfortable being drawn nude. She looks directly with a perfect gaze gesture. However, her confidence in her gestures seems her to be more comfortable and excited to pose for the painting. She does not lack fear and tempt the artist with glazed eyes, which gives her a complete dominance to the artist and the viewer as she implies female dominance. But the color that artist, artist used the painting does not show the power she has in her body. The lighting, sh the, the lighting shows poor resemblance of power. Part of her face calmly, calmly looking in the viewer while her other half is darkened by the shadow of the dark colors and the artist of what the artist uses. The uncertainty of dark colors gives a sense of uncertainty and a bit of mystery in the eyes of the female and the tone of the painting. As we continue with posture and the female, female's hands are another great feature that best illustrates her modest features. The hands can show emotion, configuration, and empowerment. In La Grande Odaleski, both arms are shown in a different angle and on both sides. The left arm is supporting her side and the left hand is out of sight while her right hand is being, being seen holding a blue, cur a blue curtain that is coming towards her. Again, female empowerment comes to mind when describing how, how she poses, but also a lack of empowerment can be shown because of how, how one hand is being shown. 
In the case of the of Olympia, both the female's hands are shown in the front of her. The left hand is on her right thigh and the right on the pillow grabbing some type of blanket. The missing hand in the painting, La Grande Odaleski, might imply that she once had she once had power, but she lost the empowerment she once had. Both females are not wearing any clothes, but they are wearing something on their wrist and hand in their head. The headwear objectifies a sense of human mortality because the head is the only thing that is being covered, but it also might simplify wealth due to their beauty. If so, the female is being objectified as an idol, preferably price worthy and non objective. The headpiece of the female in the painting like Ron Odaleski shows gold, it shows gold and bracelets made by what looks expe like expensive material. A bit of what seems visible in her shows her wealth in her household as if the house as if the house was being portrayed by not just men but women also. In the paintings of the Olympia, it shows similarities but in different scenarios. The painting in the painting, the audience views the females confidently reclining on the bed, wearing nothing but a black ribbon around her neck, a gold bracelet and her wrist from Louis the Fifteenth slippers on her feet, and her and a silk flower and silk flower in her hair, all symbols of wealth and sexuality. Another way that wealth is being sensed is a is a black cat, a Negro serving, bringing her a a bouquet of flowers. Both paintings show resemblance, but the, dif but the difference in, th in them is that one shows complete independence and the other shows serving in the painting as a serving pet of the female. As we see on the left of the Odaleski, we see how the artist uses bright colors and he uses bright imagery towards the left and the right side of the painting. But if we see centered on the, right, on the middle of the painting, we see a dark force of just dark shadows that the artist uses which uses a resemblance of, of a dark tone used in the early, early and mid 1800s, which shows how women were resembled as sex figures, but also resembled as artists, as being portrayed by male artists. Also on the right side, we see a black servant being female, giving the white, um, the way, the white um, model being the female as she's posing some flowers in a bouquet. And we see how she is being surrounded by bright colors, the pillow that she's laying on, and she has gold, gold colors running from her, from her back all the way to the bottom of her legs. And we see how both artists, when they did this, they, had a, they did it towards having a meaning as what they wanted to prove. They wanted to prove human, human uh, the humanization with women, because women were being gentrified as objects instead of humans. And a little bit of the background of the artist, Edward Mannett, born January 23rd, 1832, and passed away April 30, 1883. And he was a French modernist painter. And he was one of the first century artists to paint modern life and a uh, pivotal figure in a translation of realism to impressionism. His work modified many artists throughout the century and made the impression of color realism to impressionism, which modified the world of art as we speak today. And for John Auguste Dominic Ingres, born August 29th, 1780, passed away January 14th, 1867, was a French neoclassic painter and he was influenced by past artists and traditions and expired to become the garden of academic orthodoxy against the accents of romantic styles. Meaning he, he basically uh, made his work around uh, nothing but color realism and romanticism that portrayed um, anti-civilization towards women, dehumanization of females. And both artists have the same meaning but different type of um, artwork and they both derive from some type of different descents, but their tone and their meaning have are a bit complete different. Uh, thank you.